This is E231, 91786, Studio Master. Electrical Engineering and Computer Science 482, Software Engineering Environments, Dr. Carl Chang, Department College of Engineering, Arthur Osterman. Director is Kim Hartman. of Illinois at Chicago College of Engineering presents Electrical Engineering and Computer Science course number 482 Software Engineering Environments with Dr. Carl Chang Hi, this is Professor Chang ECS 482 unit number 31 Software Reliability Models Reliable software is critical to many applications. A missing comma in a Fortran program can cause the failure of a space flight program. It may also lead to disasters. We will suffer not only the loss in money, but sometimes we have also suffered the loss in human beings' life. Study on software reliability models is therefore very important. Reliability models was first developed roughly in 1950s when the first generation of computers just came into age. These computers made up of uh, vacuum tubes. Um, the, is, the size is so big, it's so bulky. The computer normally produced high heat for its operation. The machine was not reliable at that time because of all these kind of disadvantages. Various reliability models were then developed. Various, various techniques had also been developed for modeling hardware reliabilities. For example, the duplex system have been widely used so that if one element or one system fails, the other element can take over the job. For software reliability, however, similar ideas cannot be directly applied. How can you simply duplicate a piece of software and hopefully when one piece run into problem, the other will not suffer the same problem? So today, we are going to address the difference between the hardware reliability and the software reliability. Also, we will study a few software reliability models. We are trying to understand their assumptions and their limitations. Uh, we'll begin with our first computer slide. Okay, so the subject today is on software reliability models. First, let us review the reliability theory about computing systems. We know that the computing systems involve three factors. One is the hardware, the second is the software, and the other one is the human being, the operator. So at the very early stage of the reliability theory development, we, if we can assume the independence between these three factors, which means the software, the hardware, and the operator, then the reliability of the system will be the, the product of these three factors, the reliability of software, the reliability of hardware, and the reliability of the operator, that is the human being. Okay, but with these three factors, if you consider these three different factors, each has different failure mechanisms. 
So, how can we define what is the software reliability? The software reliability is the, rel is the probability that a given software system operates for some time period without software error on the machine for which on the machine for which it was designed given that the software system is used within some kind of design limits and this definition was given by Schumann in 1983 say this is actually the reliability is defined to be a probability uh, of a software system satisfy this condition some basic terms that uh, we use very often in the reliability theory uh, including the feather, the fault, and the arrow. The feather means any departure of program output from requirements as the program is executed. Okay, that is the feather. The fault just stands for the malfunction in hardware, in software, or in human component of a computing system. The arrow is uh, is the mail. Uh, is the manifestation of a fault. Okay, so a fault will be uh, realized in, in, into an error of the, of the system. The different methods for finding or for indicating the software faults, including a number of uh, techniques here or, te or methods. The first one is a very formal one. It's called the program proving method. Okay, the program proving, proving method is a formal and method, mathematical approach to uh, the, to, to the uh, demonstration of software errors. Um, with formal program proving approach, it's very difficult in finding those assertions as we have already discussed in some of our previous lectures. And the result of program proving normally uh, it's a binary result, which means either yes or no. Either the program can be proven as correct or the program is incorrect. The second method for finding software faults uh, is the program testing methods. The testing methods is more practical and very heuristic. And uh, sometimes it involves uh, different kind of executions, such as symbolic execution and the physical execution of the software systems. Uh, however, with program testing uh, methods, uh, there's no way we can uh, indicate the software is, uh, is perfect, okay, which means even after all the, all the labor in doing, in performing all the testing, you still not, cannot be 100% sure the software is free of errors or free of faults. So the results of program testing is normally is a relative results, cannot be a binary result such as program proving methods the answer can be yes or no. For testing, you can only say uh, the program has been tested thoroughly to a cert, uh, certain uh, confidence level. Okay, and the other approach is through the modeling approach. And in this uh, course, in this unit particularly, we'll be interested in the so-called reliability modeling. And in this area, we have already seen uh, many different kind of models. Each one has its own assumptions and its own uh, limitations and we'll study some of these uh, models uh, today. Okay, so if we talk about the probability of a successful execution of the system, then we need to understand certain mathematics here. Okay, the reliability theory, okay, will provide the modeling technique of failures and uh, will provide some kind of prediction capability of these uh, successful operation of the system. Okay, so it's a probability. Uh, the probability theory here, the, uh, the, the very basic concept involves the random variables, the probability density function, f of n, uh, fn, and the cumulative functions, the capital F. Uh, these are uh, just very, uh, you know, very uh, basic, very fundamental concept involved in probability theory. Uh, and I hope I don't have to uh, introduce over again all these uh, basic concepts. But in this reliability uh, theory, uh, the reliability of, this, of the system can be defined to be a probability of a successful uh, operation. And uh, the, 
Okay, first we, first we can calculate, we can compute based on this uh, probability equation here, uh, the time to failure, uh, the ran this is the, uh, a random variable, okay, capital T is the random variable, okay, time to failure, uh, in certain time period, what will be the probability that the system will fail? Okay, if you can calculate that, and, uh, um, okay, here, the ra here are the random variables, the, ca the ran random variables, uh, time to failure can be either calendar time or manpower working time, okay, and uh, if you can calculate the, no, you can, you can calculate this probability, then the uh, reliability will be defined to be the the opposite. Okay, the one one minus the, the probability of failure that will be the probability of success. Okay, so one minus this probability will be the probability of success, and that is defined to be your reliability. Okay, so here you have different kind of random variable in terms of time, either the calendar time in terms of those dates, the computer execution time, and the manpower working time. Okay, so, you know, so to define the software reliability first, we, uh, or, or to define the reliability first, we uh, can uh, calculate the, this, uh, uh, to calculate the, uh, the, the probability of failure, then the reliability, okay, or the probability of success, okay, will be one minus of the probability of failure, and that is defined in this uh, equation here, and further that can be uh, calculated using this integral uh, uh, formula. You can you can uh, calculate or compute the reliability of the system. Okay, which means the smaller this uh, this probability, this value, the the higher or the larger uh, will be this value, which means the more reliable uh, the system will be more reliable. Okay, if if you have a uh, smaller probability of failure, then you have a hi uh, higher okay or larger probability of success, then the system is more reliable. Okay, that's the way to inter interpret. Uh, this formula. Okay. Also, uh, it's a very important concept involved in reliability uh, study. It's called the failure rate function, or sometimes we say the hazard functions. How hazard is the system? Okay, that is a hazard function, and that is a conditional probability to f to be defined in this way. Uh, so, okay, which means the. Uh, the hazard rate Z of T is defined to be the probability, okay, that a failure occurs in some time interval from T1 to T1 plus delta T, uh, given that, okay, here is the condition, okay, this is the conditional probability, given that the system has survived up, up to time T, okay, then what is the probability uh, for, uh, of this, uh, this condition? And that's defined to be our header rate. Um, so the reliability is re is really related to the failure rate. Okay, if you consider, if you examine the system, if you uh, uh, keep track the execution of the system, you can observe those failure rates, and that those kind of uh, information are info, uh, is is useful for our uh, reliability study. Okay, so roughly we can uh, we can introduce the header rate function as. As you can see in this slide. Okay, so the reliability can be also uh, defined as a function of failure rate in this way. Okay, so reliability defined can be defined in 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 uh, in this way. Um, okay, so if the uh, if the header rate, okay, z of t equal to what to lambda? There is lambda is the uh, is a constant. So then if this is the case, if there's a constant uh, header rate, then the reliability is going to be a, an, is going to be an exponential function. Okay, as you can see here, the right-hand side, this is a exponential formula. If the uh, uh, header hazard rate uh, or failure rate is linearly increasing, okay, k of t, okay, increasing in time, t means time, then the, uh, the reliability will be defined to be uh, like this, and this is really the what we call the ready function. Okay, the ready function. Okay, so the so based on this uh, uh, this basic no notions, then uh, we can uh, start introducing the software reliability models. Okay, reliability models are used to measure or to predict software reliability. 
and uh, any kind of model has to be based on reasonable assumptions, a set of assumptions, uh, and the the acceptance criteria has to be determined uh, for each reliability model. For example, the number of errors that you can find during the testing, or the number of remaining errors that you can estimate or, or, or you can predict. Okay, these are certain criteria that has to be observed uh, uh, if you if you are going to apply this kind of reliability modeling to study the the reliability of your system. The prediction normally based is based uh, is based on the software size and the complexity of the software, uh, the so-called MTTF mean time to failure, also the failure rate. Okay, so the prediction will be will be uh, based on uh, a number of uh, uh, considerations here. Uh, how can you classify uh, these software reliability models? Uh, roughly, we can we can classify according to uh, this uh, this classification scheme. Uh, there are four categories. Uh, this is the, the this classification is uh, uh, based on the nature of the failure process, uh, and it was given by Dr. Go uh, from the Syracuse University in 1985 that this. Uh, the different models can be dif can be classified into say four categories or four classes. The first class is the times between failure models. Okay. The second is the failure count models. Okay. That is the counting process uh, to count how many errors, how many failures you can uh, you you, you uh, have experienced during the execution of the system. The third class is the four city model, and the, and the last one is concerned with the input domain. It's called the input domain based models. Okay, so first let us uh, address the first class of model is called times between failures uh, models. Okay, basically, okay, first okay, we have to make some assumptions. Uh, the assumptions is that uh, initially, okay, let's assume the system has uh, n capital N, okay, n force. Then the you have a uh, equal uh, probability of the exposure of each fault. Okay, that is, that's the first so first assumption, and uh, the embedded fault are independent of each other. Okay, so the, the fault is independent with each other, and the other assumption is the faults are removed uh, after each occurrence. Okay, which means it's a perfect fault removal process. Okay, once you detect a fault or failure or suffer a failure. The failure will be removed. Okay, will be correct, corrected, and the fault will be removed. Uh, the, the other, the other, the, the other uh, assumption is the you assume. Uh, okay, you assume the removing process is perfect uh, without injecting any new force or new errors. Okay, that's the, the, uh, this one says, and also the time between failures is independent. Okay, the independent time between failure. Okay, this is another assumption. Um, so, based this model, okay, this class of models studies the time between two consecutive failures. Uh, a very uh, famous, okay, there, there are several several very famous uh, models uh, fall into this category, such as the Jardinsky Miranda model, or so called JM model. The Strick and the Warburton model, SW model, also the Littlewood model. Okay, these are all very uh, famous model. Uh, all these models are just the, uh, is based on the time between failures, uh, based on this uh, this assumption. Okay, some of these assumptions um, have to be observed. Also, the other one uh, forgot to mention here is uh, is the Goals, uh, G O E L, Dr. Goals model. Okay, so first the JM model. Okay, here we have a, a number of models. Okay, time between two is consecutive failures. That's the basic, uh, basic observation. Then you have these uh, different kind of models. The JM model first is for estimating the initial and the residual failure rate uh, plus uh, MTTF. That's the mean time to failure. Okay, so JM or Jadinsky. Miranda's model. Okay, here you have these uh, assumptions. 
uh, detect faults are removed and also this is perfect removal process and you're not going to inject any new faults the okay and based on this model we can uh, we can also uh, modify a little bit so that you you, you can uh, okay so you can uh, you can get another uh, result first let's look at this result okay this is the basic gen model okay you can see here this is uh, this is your failure rate and the failure rate is dropping or, or is decreasing okay after each fault removal process and the, it dropped in a constant rate okay and here this is uh, your time okay at time one time two time three time four and basically this you know this uh, this model okay based on this model you have to observe those feathers and the time between feathers uh, is you know can be uh, illustrated here uh, as, as shown here uh, from the time zero to time t1 that is the time between failure between the, the between no uh, between the starting the, the between the first execution resistance and the first error that is detected Okay, then from the first arrow to the second arrow, or from first feather to the second feather, okay, you can see T2 minus T1 is the, is this time between uh, feather, uh, another uh, time interval. Okay, so you have this uh, unevenly distributed uh, time intervals, but the, uh, based on this uh, uh, JM model, the, the, the feather rate is, is decreased every time you uh, remove a, a fault. Okay, or it is, uh, is, is dropping at a very, uh, at a constant rate okay that is uh, what we we can see here uh, from this formula okay this uh this this is uh the, the pi is the is the uh constant and that uh, the the n is the total number of feathers and every time you okay you can you can see minus i okay i stands for the ice feather removal process uh so every time you, you know you are going to uh, uh decrease uh the feather rate will be decreased uh in a, in a constant okay so here the, this is a, your constant uh, rate okay the another model is the uh, is the SW model uh, this model uh, the assumption says that uh, the failure rate is proportional to the number of remaining arrows and the failure rate increases with uh, your operating time Okay, and this is called a uh, SW model. Uh, again, the model can can, can also be uh, modified uh, to get a, a slightly different result. Um, and this modification says the likelihood of a failure occurring uh, increasing rapidly as the time as the time accumulates with within your testing interval. Okay, that is uh, you have to okay. The, the original model, uh, the equation for the original model would start from here, z of t, up to here. Okay, then you have uh, this uh, this another term at, at the end of here. This is will give you a different result. Okay, so we have first uh, study what would be the result of this formula. Okay, from z of t up to this point, and that's shown in the next slide. Okay, this is the original formula for this SW model, uh, and you can see that the failure rate actually will increase in time okay with when time uh, progresses the failure rate will increase then after you hit after you uh, detect an error uh, and you remove that fault the failure rate will drop to zero okay then the failure rate will increase again when time uh, uh, time progresses and you know, the failure rate will increase again until you hit the second failure uh, and you remove the fault causing the second failure and the failure rate will drop to zero again. Okay, so this is basically the fundamental characteristics of this uh, of this uh, model. Okay, so you can see the failure rate is actually uh, give you this uh, this result. Okay, we also uh, uh, introduce this notion, so-called perfect debugging or imperfect debugging model, which means if you detect an, uh, an error, or, okay, or if you, if the system fail. And then uh, the fourth, okay, after, after you debug the system, you find the fourth. The fourth are uh, either completely removed or is uh, not completely removed. Okay, if, it's, if, you can, if you assume the fourth is not going to be completely removed, 
then this is this is going to become an imperfect debugging model. Okay, if, if you assume the force will also be will always be complete completely removed, then that's a perfect debugging model. Okay, the, based on this uh, study, the number of force at a certain time t, uh, and that is the that is a really a, a, a random variable x of t, uh, is treated as a Markov process. Okay, the, this Markov process is a uh, uh, is also related to, related to the probability theory. Okay, it's a Markov process, the whose transition transition probabilities are governed by the property uh, by the probability of, of this uh, so-called imperfect debugging model. Okay, so this uh, uh, time between the transitions of uh, x of t, this random variable, are uh, taken to be exponentially distributed with rates depending on the current fault content of the system and that is illustrated, that is modeled using this, uh, using this uh, uh, equation here here the, the P is the probability of this uh, uh, imper imperfect debugging and here lambda again is the failure rate and N is the total number of force uh, remaining force in the system okay this is the, uh, the, the, the imperfect debugging model this model was developed by, by Gore Okay, the, the other model is called the uh, Littlewood model or a V model. Um, this model says that the overall failure rate drops in constant step between bug fixes. Okay, so the dropping rate is, is, uh, is constant uh, based on this model. The, the degree of failure rate according to this model is uncertain. The any bug will contribute, any bug contributes uh, unequally to the overall failure rate. Okay, that is, that's what we, we mean by this uncertain failure rate. Okay, each bug will contribute uh, unequally to the overall system failure rate. The s a sequence of failure rate is uh, then is denoted by this lambda sub i. Okay, this is lambda sub i. So here this is, you are not talking about the constant failure rate, rather you have a sequence of failure rate lambda sub i, and these are each are con each is considered as a random variable. Okay, so each one is a random variable. So you can see this uh, theory, this model is actually become more complicated because uh, this model assumes that each failure, uh, the failure rate is is uh, is uncertain, which means for each failure, uh, the you have a different uh, failure rate, and each one is treated as a random variable. Okay, and uh, of course, then the, the the formula for this uh, based on this model, the formula will become more complicated, as you can see in this slide. Okay, the failure rate is actually is assumed to be a random process now. Okay, it's a random process. With uh, this is actually, if you look at this uh, more 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 carefully, this will give you the gamma uh, condition you no know, density function. This is the gamma function. Okay, here, this, uh, if you look at this formula here, I, I means that is the index of this failure. Uh, T sub I is the time of failure intervals. Okay, the failure intervals T sub I, uh, as you can see in this one. Okay, and here the lambda, lambda I is the random variable of this failure rate. And uh, the size sub I here is the uncertainty of the reliability growth or the quality of the programmer or the difficulty of the task. Okay, that's so the size of, size of i uh, denotes the uncertainty of this reliability growth. Okay, the other uh, major class of uh, several reliability models is the fault count model. Okay, the fault count model, again, we have assumptions here. Um, Okay, for example, the, this assumption saying that the testing interval are independent with one another. Okay, the testing, testing intervals are independent of each other. Uh, also, the testing during the intervals is, re is reasonably homogeneous. Okay, so you have homogeneous testing uh, to be applied. 
uh, number of faults detected during the non-overlapping uh, non-overlapping intervals are independent of each other. Okay, so the number of faults are also independent of of each other. Okay, so these are the basic assumptions for the four count model. Okay, then uh, here again you 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 have this uh, random variable concept. The random variable for this uh, four count model is the number of feathers in a time period from T1 to T2. Uh, but this four count model, of course, you know, is, is a model for modeling this kind of discrete events. Okay, and that's why we have this uh, Fasson uh, distribution that is actually uh, you know, is, is used for modeling this kind of discrete event. Okay, this is the, the count model, the counting model is a counting process. Okay, so if you can count the event of feathers, okay, th that is a discrete event. And uh, the, the random variable is, uh, is this uh, number of feathers. Um, and this, uh, this model actually, there are many uh, researchers are, in, are interested in this kind of modeling technique, including all these names, such as Gore, Schumann, Musa, and so on. Okay, and this is actually, this model is, is, is going to, uh, to, to give you the observation of a non-homogeneous Poisson process. Uh, we can take a look at in more detail about this, uh, about the relationship between different kind of events in this uh, four count uh, model or this of kind of Poisson distribution. And that is shown in our next, uh, in, in, in this uh, flip chart. Okay, we'll turn our attention to the flip chart over here. Okay, here you have this Fosson arrival process, and this is uh, 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 this is uh, some kind of uh, 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 stochastic uh, 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 process, and this in with this process when we model this, uh, we assume that the arrival rate, okay, of the arrival rate is going to be a constant, okay, the which means the the, the failures of the system will be observed, and the con and the rate is a constant. And the, however, the 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 inter inter arrival time of uh, of this uh, sequence of events is exponentially distributed. Okay, so you have you have this exponential inter arrival time, and that is uh, exponentially distributed equation uh, in here. Okay, and the mean inter arrival time uh, that is expected value of this random variable can be calculated. Okay. Uh, easily using this uh, integral function. Okay, the inter-arrival time of this Fosson uh, arrival process is exponentially distributed, and this is the summary of uh, what you have seen in this, uh, in this picture. Okay, I hope this one will explain uh, the basic, uh, as the essence of this model, of this class of models. Okay, now we'll get back to the uh, our flip chart, uh, our slide here. The okay, this uh, this is the goal uh, non-homogeneous Fasson uh, model. This model is uh, is uh, is based on this uh, counting process. Is it, it, it is a four count model. It's one of the four count model. Uh, in this model here, first you have this function n of t. That stands for the cumulative number of failures observed by certain time t. Okay, this will be modeled as a non-homogeneous Poisson process, uh, which means a, a Poisson process with a time-dependent uh, failure rate, uh, and that is a model using this uh, equation, uh, as you can see here. Here, this uh, m of t uh, in this uh, in this equation is the uh, is the expected number of failures observed by time t. Okay, by time t, that's the expected number of failures. Also, you have this lambda of t. Okay, this is uh, this is observed. Uh, Okay, this uh, this this equation is, uh, basically uh, give you the uh, the basic model of this uh, non non homogeneous uh, Poisson uh, Poisson uh, process. Here you have uh, uh, this equation. Okay, here you have the fundamental difference between uh, is is that the, the number of 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 force is a random variable. Okay, to, so in this model, 
the fundamental difference is that the number of faults is treated as a random variable itself. Okay, so number of faults is treated as a random variable, and you know the number of number of faults can be counted, and according to the observation of this kind of discrete event. Okay, so this is a, a random variable which is uh, does not give you a continuous function. Okay, so this here is the fundamental difference from other models. Okay, uh, another uh, a variation of this uh, the, the model we have just described uh, previously, the NHPP model, is the so-called uh, generalized NHPP model, uh, which the reason the you know we're going to have this generalized model is because uh, according to the study in practice. The failure rate, uh, it has been observed that in many, in many uh, uh, test situations, the failure rate first increases, then decreases. Okay, it's not always decreasing. It actually is first increases, then decreases. And that is, uh, okay, if according to, to this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, notion, then you, you're going to have this uh, modified equation, and that will give us a, a, a different result. Okay, and that result is uh, uh, can actually be shown in the in next two flip chart. Let's get get to the flip chart side. Okay, this is generalized uh, NHPP model. Uh, what it says actually, okay, this is the f the original model, the NHPP model by Gore. The the cumulative uh, failure rate will increase in time, and the failure rate will decrease in time. Okay, so this should not be too surprising, uh, but now. Uh, based on the actual observation during the testing, the failure rate actually increase first, then decrease, and which will give you a different curve, like you, you can see uh, in this uh, in this picture here. Okay, so that's the fundamental difference between these two model. Okay, one is the basic one, the other is the generalized one. Okay, so let's get back to the computer slides. Okay, the other very famous model is by uh, by Mr. Musa. Okay, this is called the, the Musa uh, execution time model. This model has been uh, actually has been validated, okay, based on the collection, a collection of actual test data. The the number of failures in this model is modeled in specific so-called execution time intervals. Okay, and his uh, failure rate or his head function is model is a. Uh, is uh, shown in this in this equation here. Okay, again here you have this uh, you have this proportionality uh, of constant. Okay, the here, the here this uh, this one is uh, your, your your constant, and uh, this uh, phi is this this uh, this uh, phi is your proportionality proportionality constant, which is a con which is a fault exposure ratio. Okay, which denotes your fault expo exposure ratio that relates the fault exposure frequency to the linear execution frequency in this model, and the the model is the, the time used in this model is 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 is, you, is uh, the execution time, but this model does give you the capability of converting this execution time to the calendar time, which will be useful for project management, because when you handle when you manage a project, especially when you ma manage a software project, you are very sensitive to those dates. Okay, this model allow you okay will give you a, a, a kind of mechanism to convert the execution time to the calendar time. Okay, and which will make this, which uh, of course will make this uh, model be uh, more practical and useful. Okay, another model is, uh, again, is, uh, is by a very famous uh, researcher in software engineering, it's called Schumer, Schumann uh, Exponential Model. The assumption here says that the failure rate is, propor is proportional to the number of failures residing in the software uh, system at any time. Okay, so that's a professional uh, assumption, and that head the header function for this model is uh, specified using uh, the other uh, equation. Here you, know, you have this uh, uh, normalization uh, technique. Here I stands for the total number of uh, uh, instructions, uh, n uh, that's the the number of uh, faults, and n sub c is the total number of faults corrected during time t, okay, n of c is the number of corrected faults during this time of t. Okay, again here you have another constant, this is a proportionality 
constant k, okay, capital K. Okay, the other model, major class of, of these uh, software rapidly models is the uh, forward seeding model. Uh, the assumption here ex actually that is, the, that, that is the action you have to take uh, before you apply the model is first you, you can uh, randomly distribute it, uh, the seeded force into the software and uh, uh, which mean, means you will plant, okay, you will artificially plant some force into the software system and uh, into known positions in, into known locations in the software systems and you assume that the, uh, there's an equal probability of uh, uh, for detection of, for each of these force. Okay. There are two kinds of force. One is the seeded force and the other kind is the original force. Okay. And this is again is a time independent model. Uh, the, in this model, okay, you can take advantage of combinatorics uh, theory, the maximum uh, likelihood estimation uh, technique to find the number of uh, so-called indigenous okay, force uh, and you can find, you can estimate the software reliability. Okay, a very famous uh, model in this for, uh, for into this category is the mill city model. Okay, just like uh, in, in, in Africa, in the jungle, okay, you can, uh, uh, you, you can uh, catch some uh, animals, for example, you, know, you can catch the uh, 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 zebras, and you you know you just mark each issue of these uh, uh, zebras. Okay, you in some kind of mark, uh, and then you then you just uh, free the, all these zebras, and then later on, okay, after certain days, you catch some zebras and count say how many zebras ha have been uh, marked before, and based on this uh, this kind of uh, per on the percentage that you can find uh, for this marked the zebra, then you can estimate what is the uh, what is the, the what is the uh, overall. Uh, distribution of this uh, uh, family, this uh, family of zebras in this uh, in this jungle. Okay, so based on th those kind of uh, uh, study and based on those kind of techniques, okay, we, we, we apply to our software reliability model. Okay, input domain based method is the last uh, uh, major category of uh, reliability models. Okay, here. Uh, again, we have to make some assumptions. The input profile distribution is known. Okay, that's first assumption. The, and uh, you, you are going to perform so-called random testing. Okay, not, uh, the testing will be done randomly. The input domain is also uh, has to be partitioned. Okay, every time we talk about input domain, uh, we, we also talk about the domain partition. Okay, how can you partition the domain uh, into some equivalent, equivalent classes of uh, subdomains uh, and then you can generate a set of uh, test cases from this input distribution okay from each input domain you generate test cases then you just observe uh, the number of failures and you're going to estimate the program reliability based on the observation uh, and, the, f and the, the most notable models uh, fall into this category including the Nelson model the Ramamurthy's model and this uh, Bastani's model. Okay, so uh, to summary all these um, this, the assumptions and limitations of all these different kind of uh, models, and this model basically fall into four uh, major categories. Uh, we can see here you have a number of assumptions listed in this slide. Okay, there's a very common assumption uh, saying that the, the uh, time between feather is independent with each other, which means you have independent times between feather. Okay, also the detect fault uh, is corrected and uh, assume, also assume that for most of the model you assume you don't have any injected force. Okay, so which means the fault detection and, and removal process can be done perfectly. And uh, the, the other, the other uh, something to say is, uh, is uh, you have uh, this decreasing feather rate. Okay, so once you, you know, okay, and every time you fix a, fix a, uh, fix an arrow, okay, or you remove a fault, then you will have this decreased uh, failure rate. Okay, that is also a, 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 an assumption for most of the models. Um, uh, basically, also uh, many models assume that the failure rate is in proportional to the uh, number of remaining faults. Okay, then the reliability. Uh, 
uh, roughly can be defined to be the f uh, to be a function of the number of remaining uh, force. Okay, that is the uh, for most of the models that that's the way to to compute or to calculate this reliability of the of the software system. And the failure rate, um, most of the uh, okay failure rate is uh, will be based on the time which means time is used as basis for most of these so-called failure rate okay, in different models okay, so it's done on a time basis uh, and the, the failure rate increases between failures uh, that's, that is a, a, a different kind of assumption uh, uh, the assumption was made by some, some models as we have already discussed also uh, for the testing uh, we assume that the testing is really representative of our operational use okay. because of that then we can we can uh, reasonably uh, uh, assume that after we uh, compute the reliability, uh, is re is the, the is going to be the uh, practical or the true reliability of the software systems. Okay, so we have a uh, uh, different kind of assumptions uh, that have been made uh, on in this in each of these models, and each of these assumptions, of course, will also give you some limitations. Uh, so in this, uh, that is uh, uh, probably all we'd like to say about this uh, assumption and limitation of the models. And today we have uh, uh, studied the software reliability modeling. The software reliability modeling is still uh, a very hard research area. The researchers in this area try to improve the performance of the software reliability models by considering more factors such as, uh, the, the, for example, the data flow information. Uh, most of the models uh, didn't address th that issue. Uh, similar to the concept uh, we, we introduced in software software metrics. Uh, software reliability models are also subject to more validation. So uh, before before the acceptance of these models, we need more validation work to be done. The next. Next time, uh, when we come back, we'll, again, we are still studying the software reliability models, but we will we'll concentrate on the specific ways of applying these kind of models to software project or software project management. I will see you next time. Thank you.